Okay, so today I'm taking a look at question four from the 2012 scholarship paper. Um, so part A is about uh, base pairing in DNA. So we'll read the question first. DNA is an alternating polymer of deoxyribose sugars and phosphate groups with DNA bases often labeled A, T, C and G attached to the sugar units. Um, DNA usually exists as two strands that are linked to each other by hydrogen bonds between the bases in the different strands. A bonds with base pairs with T and G base pairs with C as shown below. Um, separation of the two strands can be achieved by heating aqueous solutions of the DNA and if urea is present DNA strands can be separated at lower temperatures and then they give you the structural formula for urea. So the key chemical idea here it's it's all about hydrogen bonding. Um, so hydrogen bonding if you remember you learned this in level three um, hydrogen bonding is particularly prevalent between um, compounds which have um, the um, following elements uh, stuck together basically if it's oxygen bonded to hydrogen then there's quite a degree of separation in electronegativity there of those two elements so then you can form a hydrogen bond with this hydrogen um, to say another oxygen. Um, alternatively, the hydrogen could be bonded to nitrogen. Again, quite a difference in electronegativity. So this hydrogen would be able to um, hydrogen bond with another element such as nitrogen. And then if you had um, fluorine bonded to hydrogen, which is not as common, especially in um, organic compounds, you could also get a hydrogen bonding situation happening there. So it's to do with the difference in electronegativity the high degree of difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. So taking that concept and looking down to our base pairing, you can see here that the nitrogen is bonded to a hydrogen in that case. So this is very electropositive and, um, well, slightly electropositive, and the nitrogen is slightly electronegative. Similarly, the oxygen on this side will be electronegative, so therefore you get your hydrogen bond established. And we get a second hydrogen bond established here. So when um, um, adenine, adenine, adenine um, base pairs with thiamine, you get um, two times hydrogen bonding. So you get two times hydrogen bonds. Whereas you should notice that with uh, guanine and cytosine, you get one, two, three hydrogen bonds. So you get three time, you get three hydrogen bonds possible between G and C and two possible between A and T. So this should be a slightly stronger bond overall. The bond between G and C bases is slightly stronger than the bonding between adenine and thymine. Okay, so then we move on down. So we're still thinking about this hydrogen bonding concept. Um, so separation of the two strands can be achieved by heating aqueous solutions of the DNA. Well, the heat will give enough energy, will give kinetic energy to move the molecules around and help them to basically rip apart. The aqueous solution will, will um, contain water, which can hydrogen bond to um, any of those hydrogen bonds and essentially compete with the bases for, for these bonds right here and help to wiggle its way through the, the hydrogen bonds that hold the bases together and break them apart slowly. But this can be further enhanced then by using urea. So if you dissolve urea in your aqueous solution, this is found to increase the, the process or the rate of the process again. And this is because of the ability to hydrogen bond with that oxygen, that nitrogen, or that nitrogen right there. So there's three possible areas where a hydrogen could bond um, to the urea molecule. So hence increasing um, the, this, the, the separation of those two fragments in solution. So that's the background knowledge. If we scroll on down, then let's see what the question actually is. So the question states, um, the separation temperature for a range of DNA fragments in aqueous solutions is given in the table below. The first and last two base pairs are, all this, are, base pairs are the same in all cases. So the first base pair is always G and C. So you can see it there, G, C, G, C, G, C. And then the last two are all the same. They're all CG, CG. So they're all the same right there. And then you have some separation temperatures here. 
Um, what I did was I just counted up the number of hydrogen bonds that were present um, in each fragment. So there's three between each G and C. So three, 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 three. And that gives you a total of 24 hydrogen bonds in the first between the first two frag or between the two strands of the first fragment. Uh, the next one you have three, 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 two for an AT. Two there again, three, 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 and that works out to be 28 hydrogen bonds. And if you go through the whole process, you find that the next strand is 30, the next strand is 32, and the next strand is 34, and the next strand also is 34. So if you don't believe me, you can go through that process yourselves and just count up the number of hydrogen bonds. Um, so the, the general trend here is that as you increase the number of hydrogen bonds, so the number of hydrogen bonds is increasing. The separation temperature also increases, and that makes sense because the, the more bonding there is between the two fragments, between the two strands of the fragment, the harder it will be to separate them. The other thing which is happening as well is that the size of the fragment is also increasing. So this leads to more intermolecular bonding. So your van der Waals, your weak van der Waals forces, and as a result, that should also account for the, the slight increase in separation temperature. So they're the two main things we need to talk about there. We can go to the um, sample answer from NZQA just to see what they say. So separation requires the breaking of hydrogen bonds. Yes, we accounted for that. Longer fragments have more hydrogen bonds to break, so need a higher temperature. And for chains of similar length, GC leads to a higher melting point than AT because there are more H bonds between the GC pairs than the AT pairs. Um, so that's the first part done there. We go back to the exam paper and see what else they ask. So we scroll on down. The next part of the question is, account for variations in the separation temperatures of the DNA fragments and discuss the reasons for the decrease in separation temperature when urea is present. So we've kind of mentioned this already. Okay, so I want to avoid writing blocks of text um, for some of these paragraph answers as they're already pretty well written um, from the NCEA guys. So I'll just um, put some, some key ideas down here. So the variation in separation temperatures, we've mentioned this already. Um, the more hydrogen bonding, the larger the temperature for separation. We found that. Also, the larger the molecule, higher the separation temperature. Um, we also um, need to talk about the separation in an aqueous system. So in an aqueous system, essentially, you have your two, so if you have two strands of DNA right here, and you have A bonded to T there with its two hydrogen bonds, if you put water in there, the water molecule will get in there, and it will start competing with the um, one of the hydrogens here to try and break that bond and form a new bond right there. So the water molecules will wiggle their way in between the strands of the fragment and start to break it up. And then we can also, as we said already, introduce urea. And the good thing about urea, we just quickly draw the structure. Um, urea has three possibilities there to form hydrogen bonds. It can form hydrogen bonds with that oxygen, with that nitrogen right there. Um, or with this nitrogen right here. So again, that's a three-pronged attack to try and break up these base pairs, um, and this therefore um, lowers the separation temperature to se separate the two fragments. So that's the gist of it, and um, there's a nice diagram on the NCEA answer, so let's just take a look at that. Um, so separating of DNA, here we go, in water will involve breaking hydrogen bonds between the strands and forming new hydrogen bonds from the bases to water molecules. We covered that. Each water molecule will only be able to form a single hydrogen bond to a particular base. So this is the limitation of, of water. You can only form one hydrogen bond using that oxygen right there. Just one. Um, the functional groups of urea are similar to those in the DNA bases and more than one hydrogen bond is possible in each case. For example, you have two hydrogen bonds here, so this is urea, and you have one, two hydrogen bonds between your urea, and this could be a base. And then this is the rest of the, the strand. 
So the separated form is more stable with these new hydrogen bonds as compared to water, so energy is released and hence a lower temperature is required. Okay, so that was the first part of the question. The second part of the question um, is quite involved. Again, it's very like um, question three of this paper in that there's no link between part A and part D. Um, so as a result of there being no major link, I'm just going to do a separate video for um, part B of this question. So that was question four, part A from the 2012 scholarship paper.